YourBusiness.com podcast with Tony Rourke and Kevin O'Flaherty. ShoutYourBusiness.com, making you money. Share it on Facebook, share it on LinkedIn, Twitter, our blog, YouTube videos, listen to our podcast, getting so hot that it's burning up the stereo. Welcome to the SeizureBusiness.com podcast. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law, and I'm joined today by Sandra Lumpkin from West Suburban Showcase. Our topic today is going to be branding. Thanks so much for uh, joining me today, Sandra. You're welcome. Thanks for having me here. I appreciate it. So tell me a little bit about your business and what you do and how you help people. Okay. Um, West Suburban Showcase, um, we basically started in 2004 so that um, we could be an assistant to other like new businesses or even large businesses that are already in existence. But it's all about branding and getting your name out there so that people recognize who you are. And uh, after the branding happens, then they need to be able to like you and want to do business with you. So that's what um, the West Suburban Showcase does. We work alongside of businesses, business owners, your marketing department and so forth to help you with promoting your business. So if I were to sit down with you and you basically have a first meeting about branding my business, how does that how does that meeting go and what sort of uh, information do you gather and how, what, what's the process of working with you like? Great question. Um, the first thing that I would like to do as a branding strategist is to come to your place of business or if you have a home business, at least um, some information about your website um, that I can actually go on and view um, to see what type of colors you have and just kind of get a feel of who you are and what it is that you're trying to promote um, your business. You want um, a certain message to be portrayed with your business and different products can do that for you. Okay. Are there particular types of colors that you recommend using or not using for people that, that people tend to like or that, that consumers tend to you know, get a favorable impression from? Well, you know, bright colors are always exciting. Um, usually uh, when you show up with like hot pinks or uh, lime greens and things like that, people are more susceptible to notice you because you are definitely a little bit different than um, than people with the black or, you know, your darker colors and so forth that are just kind of blending in with uh, with their surroundings. So is the first step in branding once you've kind of seen what the what your customer is and what they're doing is the first step then kind of creating a logo yes um a lot of my clients already have a logo or they have an idea as to um what kind of logo that they want so um i'll just take for example uh, a client that has no logo but have an idea i can work with my customers to do that um i don't have a um an extensive background in graphic design. However, I'm pretty good at it, um, self-taught and just, you know, did some reading up on it and so forth. I took a few classes in the industry um, so that I could become more familiar with uh, logos and um, how they connect with actual printing in different ways because um, logos print differently on different items and um, the background to all of that is the type of file that you want to use. And I'm there also to kind of help my clients to um, to know what type of file that they need to have. That's really a huge thing, though, um, because a lot of people will have, like, say, a JPEG file and think that they could just get all of these things made. But um, that's that's not so. Um, you'll find that some printers will say, okay, yeah, we'll take the JPEG. However, they have to recreate it into a file that is usable for printing a vector file. That's the industry word. And <clears throat> for the most part, they'll charge you for it, but you won't know that because it'll go, it'll just kind of blend right into the price. So um, that's one of the things that I also do. I, I help the uh, the client to create the logo and kind of give them some some um, some pointers on um, cost as associated with putting um, things on products. I actually have something here. I just want to show you really quick sure. just to kind of give you an idea as to what I mean. Um, this is just a bag. And as you can see, it's got a bunch of colors on it um, that can be a little bit more costly 
than it would be if you just printed something that only had one color on it. Um, because then your artwork also has to be broken down as well into all of those different screens in order to do the color. Okay. So when you, when you talk about vector files, basically what mm -hmm. a vector file is, is is something that you can expand or shrink without Absolutely. distorting the image? Okay. Absolutely. Because a JPEG, which is what most people are familiar with, um, if you try to expand it, make it larger, it, you'll start to lose resolution. Whereas with a vector file, you can make it as small as something that you would use on a button or expand it to something as big as a billboard. Okay. And I can also help my clients with billboards as well as signage and banners and that kind of thing as well. And so the, the creation of the vector file is why you wouldn't really want to just try to make your own logo you know, in paint shop or something, um, because you actually need some probably skill or at least some special programs to create that vector file and be able to put your logo on all your things, right? Yeah. Um, yes. Vector files are created usually like in an Adobe Illustrator, uh, Corel Draw, you can do, and there's some other, not necessarily like super highly professionals, um, that you can use some programs that you can actually use um, to create this file. I know there's even some products out there, uh, logo works I've heard that can um, help you to create uh, pretty much simple uh, logos for your business as well. And so, like I said, that's something that I can actually help my customers with. So we can totally skip the logo works site completely and I can help them to create and create a vector file for their business. And along with that file, you, you kind of give uh, an indication of what the color scheme is, right? The code for the colors rather than, mm -hmm. you know, I, when I first started, I tried to do my own logo and I was just kind of trying to, you know, guess what color looked like the, the colors I'd used in the past. Yeah. But you actually will kind of give it. I'm not sure what it's called, but it is it, some sort of portfolio of here's here's all the information you need printer in order to yes. use this logo, right? Yes, it's it's called a PMS chart. I think that's what you're referring yes, to. Um, that PMS chart is basically, it's it's a national color, a color uh, scheme or plan or what have you that lists all the colors by number. Okay. And um, you can have a PMS number. Um, let's just say this is a PMS number 225 in a pink. Excuse me, 235. Actually, I looked this up yesterday, <laughs> so I happen to know. It's a 235 in a pink. Um, however, sometimes you'll get people, uh, suppliers who will have product that may be in a 225 in a pink. And sometimes, you know, you kind of adjust because it's their standard color. Sure. So you'll just go ahead and, and use that, which is also um, the difference as well. If someone just goes online and, and try to order product, they may not understand what standard colors are versus, you know, having your exact PMS, because we do have a lot of businesses, a larger companies, I'm sure Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and those kind of companies, they don't uh, settle for what the standard color is. It must be a certain PMS color because you want your branding to be consistent sure. in everything that you do. So w what are some, now you've got your logo and you've got your color picked out, What's the next step in effective branding that you advise people? Um, well, the next step I would say would be to just kind of internalize the types of items that you want your your logo to represent. And again, I have. Um, a yeah, why, why don't here. you show me some of your stuff? Just right? show I know you you're some dying of my to stuff. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I didn't mind just kind of going through it one by one as we go through it. Um, PPA Chicago happens to be the industry that I belong to. Um, it's the Pro Promotional Products Professionals of Chicago. Okay. So um, basically, you depending on the type of event that you're going to do. So um, a lot of people will use ink pens, and of course, ink pens have pretty much been overused. You know, they're so inexpensive that people just feel like they can just, you know, use a pen because this is all I have in my budget. Sure. Um, but again, with me, um, West Suburban Showcase, I could help you with, you know, items to fit your budget. That's not just some general item that everyone will show up at an expo with. Mm -hmm. um, you're trying to promote your business. So you want to kind of think about uh, the type of event that it is. If it's an outdoor event, if it's a, a running event or something like that, you might even consider doing 
a, a mug or something so that the, when the people are coming, they, um, they'll have something to put their water in or even a water bottle with a full color um, display of your logo uh, and so forth. And, and there's just so many different things that you can do um, to even complement with what someone else is doing. For example, if someone else is bringing the water bottles, you know they're going to have them. Then there's also a clip that um, maybe the runners or the walkers in, in like say a 5K can actually take a clip and clip their water bottle onto you know, a totally logoed a piece that has your information on it. And, and if it's a really cool and, and, and usable utility item, most people will keep those and they'll always have your contact information with them. So is that the trick is to find something that people aren't just going to throw away? As he said as trick. <laughs> <laughs> Promotional branding is not a trick. You know, actually, I thought about that um, the other day because, you know, you kind of think about with with branding, you have to be creative. So, you know, some some people might use the word trick, uh, but that's such a harsh word. Well, I didn't mean it in that sense. I know. I, mean, I understand. Is that I the understand. key? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you say trick, you want to try to um, get the person who's looking at your product, you want to get their brain to accept the fact or at least envision me using this product for other things. And that's why the pen, the ink pen became so popular, because everyone uses an ink pen. Sometimes it's not so much as that it's an ink pen. But that, you know, um, what's on it, sometimes an ink pen can have like a loyalty phrase on it so that the potential customer would have to have that number the next time they called on them and they would give them a discount or something like that uh, on a product. So um, that will keep their branding in front so of them. So you put right on the pen that, you know, if you call up and use this phrase, you get a discount. Absolutely. So the Absolutely. Oh, that's a, I haven't heard that idea. Absolutely. Before. So you, you've taken a 25 cents pen and you've differentiated yourself from the other people who may be at an event um, exhibiting as well, because now it's, it might be just a simple plastic pen that most people will put in a cup holder and let anybody take away. But now I want to hold on to that pen because, you know, now I need that number or whatever is written on that pen to get my discount the next time I call on that person. No, oh, that's that's cool. I, I, I like that. Yeah, idea. that's one of my tricks to the trade. That's, that's trick. <laughs> that trick word. <laughs> so what what are the kind of the top items that you find to be really effective for people? I would probably say ink pens, but in the world of T-shirts and apparel, let me tell you, that is really uh, one of the big ones. Is one of my biggest, uh, um, one of my biggest sellers that I uh, work with my clients with um, T-shirts because T-shirts come in all types of designs, and uh, to actually embroider on them, or to screen print on them, or this new digital. A full color sublimation. I mean, there's so many new and exciting processes. What's what's full color sublimation? I've never heard. Oh those. my goodness! It goes like directly into the fabric of the t-shirt. So if you notice, like if you can just feel like this, you can feel that that was like heat pressed on sure. there. Although heat press shirts are you know still very popular, but you get it will like the ink will just go right into the fabric and it's still full color and there's no screen charges and that kind of thing. The ink just goes directly onto the fabric to yeah. put your logo or any type of a, a special saying that you have and so forth. So how do you use t-shirts effectively as a marketing tool? Cause I can't, I, you know, owning a law firm, I can't picture, giving out t-shirts to my clients and actually having them want to wear it around. Maybe. Right. But how do people, you know, once they've got the cool stuff, mm -hmm. how do they actually get it out to people and have people use it? Use it. Good question. Again, um, what I found is that, as you said, a lot of people, um, you feel like don't want to wear, you know, my t-shirt to just advertise for me. But what you do is co-brand with another event that's going on. Just like I mentioned earlier, um, if someone is doing a 5K run and so forth, of course, then you would actually work with the company, whoever is, is promoting this particular run. You can work with them and be the person who actually provides the T-shirts for the right. event. So now everyone is running around with T-shirts with your law firm oh, information right on idea. the actual t-shirt. <laughs> so yeah, co-branding is, it's, it's a really big thing. A lot of people kind of overlook it because they're, 
they're um, more interested, or I shouldn't say more interested, don't realize the opportunity that you can have to co-brand with someone. And if you don't mind, I can give you one other example of co-branding, which is awesome. So you might (laughs) want to write this down. Uh, Coffee shops, local coffee shops in in Downers Grove. I'm sure there's, you know, um, smaller chains other than your Starbucks um, who have those little cup holders that they cover. It's like a little it's a paper. So you don't burn yourself. Exactly. So that you don't burn yourself. That's a supply that they use. Right. So every time someone purchases a cup of coffee, guess what? They're going to get one of those sleeves. Sure. Why not co-brand? with that that local coffee shop and ask them because they have that's in, in their budget they have to purchase those sleeves if they don't purchase those sleeves they're not going to sell a cup of coffee will right? a big chain like starbucks go for something no like i that? wouldn't go for starbucks pa, it would pa, yeah pa. i would definitely go after a mom and pop but who knows starbucks might be interested it's unfortunate never know. my office you is above know. a starbucks so, <laughs> my balls are going off my head. <laughs> so yeah so you would actually have the sleeves printed with your law firm on there and so whenever someone comes to get a, a cup of coffee guess what there's your your law firm listed right on that cup of coffee. So what other cool ideas? Because you've got I, I, you, <laughs> you've piqued you my up. interest. I got now. your yeah. interest peaked. What, 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 what are the cool ideas do you have? You know what? This is why I love my 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 career. I love what I do because it's always something that someone can use to promote themselves. Sometimes in subtle ways. Sometimes in more creative ways. And you know, it, it's just limitless with the things that you can do, you know, with this business. Um, The city of Chicago uh, recently, on August 1st, they stopped the... the plastic bags. Are you familiar with that? Well, you're no. a lawyer. Come on. You got to know about this. Yeah, tell me about it. Yes. The city of Chicago, um, the stores in the city of Chicago can no longer use plastic bags. Okay. Okay. And now they're trying to get you to purchase um, the paper bags and so forth whenever you go to the store. So the bags are extra now? At the so store? the bags are extra and everybody's into recycle, right? Mm-hmm. Why not donate bags at the next event, any event, it doesn't matter what event it is. You know, you, you're just, you know, going to a local chamber expo or just going to even a leads group meeting or whatever you're doing because everybody shops. I don't care what kind of a business you're in and you're the CEO or whatever. Somebody in your family is going to go for the groceries or something like that. Mm-hmm. Right. So you want to pet, not this little tiny little shopper, but you know, the big grocery sacks sure. that they have. And these are non-woven. These are really um, used for reuse because, you know, the recycle, reuse uh, and that kind of thing. So you give these bags out and people will have these bags in their car because they can't use the plastic bags. So now they're pretty much forced to have their own bag because other than that, they have to pay for one. So now are they going to throw that bag away? No, for one, it's a recycle bag. And for number two, they don't want to have to buy a bag sure. every time they go to the grocery store. So they're going to consistently want to keep these bags in the car. Unlike before this ban, you know, you could if you want to. Yeah, you really didn't have to, you know. But now you pretty much have to unless you want the expense of buying bags every time you go to the store. You have further validated my decision to live in the suburbs. <laughs> 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 hey, let me tell you, some of those bands actually come to the suburbs sometimes. You never know. <laughs> so you never I, know. I have to know what this uh, this is, this white Capitol Dome looking. <laughs> is that just something to stick on your desk? Is a, a, well, oh, it's, it's a stress ball. It's a stress ball, actually. Um, and I brought this one just to show customization. You know, it doesn't have to just be a ball anymore. It can actually be the shape of a church that was just um, built or if a, um, a new company came into the neighborhood. Um, so these could be totally custom into any shape that you want. And again, like you notice, it is a stress ball. Okay, cool. Do you, are, are there any, do you ever have a client come to you and say, I want to do this as a promotional campaign Mm-hmm. Are there any bad ideas that you've heard where, where you say, you know what, that's 
that's something that I haven't seen work very well in the past. Try this instead. Um, not really, because, you know, you could pretty much go any direction that you want with promotional products, because as I mentioned before, it's, you know, it's all about creativity and doing something totally different. Um, you can take one item and do something else with it. I have a client, for example, who uses bank deposit bags for school supply, excuse me, you know, the pencils, the pencil holders. So they use that. So they've taken one product and they've totally used it for something else. So if a school would have walked up to me and said, Sandra, I want to order some bank deposit bags, I probably would have said, no, that's not a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they want to use it as a pencil case, you know, for their students, it's actually an awesome idea. So it's basically what, what people are going to use and what they're going to hold on to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you how do you go about finding your your customers? What's how how do you bring the business into yourself? Good question again. <laughs> um, I started off with just simply doing business with people that I do business with. For example, um, I started when my children were really small, so they were in preschool. So my preschool did T-shirts. So I just asked for the order. You okay. know. Um, again, like I mentioned before, people want to do business with people that they like. So I'm a mom, my, my kids are here in the school and, you know, they can pretty much go wherever they want to go for T-shirts. So they gave me the business. So as I moved along and the children went into the elementary level, again, same thing, joined the PTA. And now I'm getting referrals. People know what I do. And I'm getting PTA orders and I'm getting, you know, the general school orders and, um, so it just kind of went on from there. Um, I also am a member of the Lombard Chamber of Commerce. Okay. And um, so I get referrals from them. I get actual uh, chamber members to do business with me. Um, it's all about showing up. <laughs> getting involved in the community yes, is huge. Yes, getting for involved business. with the community. Um, West Suburban Showcase, also speaking of getting involved in the community, that was one of our first uh, endeavors, really. Um, we did an expo. Because I noticed a lot of people coming to me whenever they wanted to do uh, ink pens or whatever it was that they were doing so that they can go to uh, an expo to promote themselves. They would ask me that question. Do you know of any other places that we can go? And a lot of times the answer was no, because I really didn't know. But they all, they helped me to realize I should probably find out where the next expos are, you know, so that. I can at least tell my clients where they can go uh, to showcase their product. So the West Suburban Showcase decided to be an expo itself. So that's what we did. Um, we went to the, um, to the, what was the name of the place? To the, the Fairfield Inn and Suites okay. in Lombard. Um, they were a chamber member at the time. And of course they gave me a nice discount to, um, to be there. And basically I just um, sold exhibit space to different people, uh, community members, and we turned it into more than just show up and exhibit, you know, your wares. We turned it into uh, also more like an educational experience. Uh, we had speakers on different topics wow. and so forth that were there. Uh, we even had a little entertainment in that um, I had um, worked with a dance school that was in Lombard, and they came and they did a presentation. So it was kind of a win-win. I got, you know, someone to come and do entertainment at the expo, as well as they got an opportunity to show the community who they were and the type of skills that some of their students actually possess. It sounds like so, quite an endeavor to put on an expo. It totally was, <laughs> which is why it went from every year to every two years and now. <laughs> I'm not really sure when the next one is going to Every Every decade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something like that. I bet you get a lot of business out of that, though, because everyone that's coming need, probably needs some gear to give yes. away. Yes, everyone who comes, um, except for some people who actually make a product themselves. A lot of them um, didn't necessarily use a promotional product. But let me tell you the flip side of even that, because a lot of people don't realize that business cards is a promotional item mm -hmm. that the West Suburban Showcase can certainly supply them okay. with. So brochures, business cards, 
all those types of things that, you know, like I said, even if a person makes the item and they just want to pass it out, you know, they still need a business card. They still need a retractable banner. They still need, you know, things to help promote their business. You can help me maybe resolve an internal dispute at my office. I, <laughs> uh oh. On my business card, <laughs> I've got my picture on it because okay. I, I want, you know, I want people to, you know, remember what I look Absolutely. like when they meet me. The attorneys that that I work with think that's, you know, kind of cheesy to put a picture on, and they refuse to put the pictures on their business cards. Where do you where do you come down on pictures on business cards in professional service industries? Interesting. Okay. And you can be honest. See, now that you put professional services industry on there, it makes it sound kind of, you know, standoffish and they can't have any fun. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Anybody can have some fun. (laughs) It's a it's a personal preference. Totally. It's a personal preference. I personally, my business cards, you will find my photo on it. Oh, that makes me feel better. Yes, I'm (laughs) glad. uh, because there's a lot of people that do what you do. There's a lot of people that do what I do. I want to give my potential next client a business card that's going to have my face on it because I want you to remember me. Oh, yeah, this was the young lady I met at the whatever, whatever. And they can associate whether or not they had a good time, whether I said something funny or maybe I was absurd and they don't want to do business with me. Hopefully not the latter. (laughs) But, you know, that's why I want people to to see my photo on my business card. I'm totally an advocate for that. So okay. I think you're doing a good thing and you're separating yourself from them. You sure. know, um, some people who have become older in age uh, tend to not want to because, you know, their hair is gray, like, you know, like mine, but, <laughs> um, you know, or whatever the reason, some people have gained maybe some weight and they don't want to take a photo. And, and I totally get that. You know, sometimes you can even use a pet. On a photo, um, a cute little dog. Totally on your business or card. Yeah, totally <laughs> on your business card, and um, and people will remember you by that. Okay. What's uh, if someone wants to kind of brand themselves as young and hip and progressive? <laughs> and again, sometimes sometimes these podcasts turn into initial consultations for me. Where I'm, <laughs> but if you know, if let's say you're hypothetically in the legal industry and right. you don't want to come off like a stodgy lawyer, what are some tips? For having a exciting branding that makes you seem cutting edge? You know, there's so many things that you can do. And I would say start with color. Okay. Colors that pop. Uh, one of the things that I say is go from gray to hey. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So, you know, you want to, you, you want to stand, you know, aside from everyone else, you want to pop. You want people to recognize you. And when people see color, color makes people feel good, you know, or they become really interested and they have no idea what it is that you even sell or do. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they see the colors, they're standing out, they're popping, they're they're saying something to them, they're inviting them over. And people have the tendency to want to come over there, let's just say at at an expo. There's so many ideas that I can give you for um, standing out from the next lawyer that's standing next to you. Like you said, be more vivacious and more interesting, more Mm -hmm. uh, youthful feeling, you know, that kind of thing. with things that make noise, you know, uh, if you have something like that, what? for example, a spin the wheel, okay. I did this even before I said it, <laughs> a spin the wheel makes, it makes that click, 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 click noise. Okay. So I can be over at another exhibit and I hear that noise and I want to know where that noise is coming from. And then I see a bunch of people standing in line waiting just to spin the wheel. Is it kind of like you spin it for a prize? Or you something? spin it for a prize. You spin it for a coupon. You spin it for whatever. And most of the time, people don't really even care what it is. They get the opportunity to spin the wheel. It's making noise. You know, me, myself, personally, I'm clapping, <laughs> you know, I mean, because that's just the person that I am. And I totally suggest this to my clients as well. You know, don't just have a spin the wheel. Make it fun. Make people want to come over. You know, I have these little clappers um, that you can use as well to make noise. So you want something that people are going to be attracted to. I can pick up another product as well. I know you said this light wasn't going to do well Well, you can flip it on as long as it's not going the whole process. You know, if if you're going to be doing an event at night, um, these are awesome. 
um, night walks so and that a, kind of thing. It's a flashing globe. It's for a those flashing of you who are globe, <laughs> and you know, either that looks like it hangs around your neck. You yes, you can hang it around your neck. You know, um, some people after the fact can use it to go on walks. Okay. When they're uh, walking their dog at night oh, so you and you want the cars car. to yeah. see you. Absolutely. So, you know, you can go from, you know, being the life of a party or being at an expo to I can use this later to do something that I'm going to need later, like walking my dog or just walking myself at night. Okay. You know, wanted to just get That's some. That's cool. That's a, I like that idea. Yeah. I, so there's I more I see you than brought some ways. more toys here. What else? What else do you have? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a really popular one. This is a, um, it's a, it's a portable charger. Okay. And of course there's the opportunity there to, um, to put your logo or whatever on there. And it just simply hooks up to your phone with a cable, of course, that they come with every phone and you just put your, U, the USB in. How much does ballpark one of those cost? I mean, about ten bucks. Really? About wow. ten bucks, and that's also with a one color logo on there. Yeah, These that's are really nice. Would use. No one is going to throw this away. I guarantee yeah. you, they're not going to throw it away. And a lot of times, they're not even going to loan it to anyone because you <laughs> might not get this back. Yeah. So um, that leads me to another point. A lot of people want to go with low cost items. Sometimes when you do higher end items. Those are the ones that people will hold on to the longest, and your contact information is always there in their face. So do you have any so, other uh, advice you want to share with the listeners about branding or anything else? Uh, well, there's so much. Um, I would say that to use someone like what I do, my service, would certainly be uh, something that they should consider. And I might add that I don't charge for my service. You only pay for what you purchase in the form of the promotional items. So the advice comes free, huh? The advice comes free. So That's everything great. that I've shared with your podcast audience is all free of charge. It's the kind of thing that I do when I work with a client one-on-one -on -one, um, to, you know, to just kind of take them to the steps, through the steps a little bit faster than they would if they had to do a lot of these things on their own. Um, another good thing for what I do for my clients is the fact that they can continue to do what they do, um, to run their business. Whereas with me, they can contact me and say, Sandra, I need, uh, 250 of these things with my logo. Well, I already have your logo archived, you know, in my files. So I could just go directly to it. I, you know, you can tell me, Sandra, I have a price point of about 12 bucks. You know, what can you find for me? And then I do all the work. You're not on the Internet searching day in and day out for things because, granted, I'm doing this every day. So I already know where the $12 items are. I already know where the sure. $8 items are, you know, because my suppliers are constantly contacting me um, with specials and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of times you really can't. Um, find things on the internet that I can't find hmm. and get for you uh, either at the same price or even better if I really want to work. Well, with and it you. seems like, I mean, just the things I've learned today would be worth not, you know, getting the stuff off the internet. You know, yeah. I, even if you weren't able to save me money, which sounds like you can, yeah. just having, it seems like it's all in the idea and, yes. and, and yes. having good ideas and yes. someone with experience guiding you in Absolutely. how to use those ideas. I wouldn't have thought to do the, the coffee cup holders or, you yes. know, so I, I appreciate you sharing your wisdom with us. Absolutely. Today. How can, how can people reach you if they want to, want to hire you? Okay. Um, I have a website as well as of course a telephone number yeah, give them both. and an email address um, that they can reach me. Um, again, my name is Sandra Lumpkin. And the name of the uh, business is the West Suburban Showcase. And we could be reached at www.westsuburbanshowcase.info. Not .com, <laughs> not .net, but .info, I-N-F-O, westsuburbanshowcase.info. And my email address is the same, westsuburbanshowcase at comcast.net. And my telephone number is area code 630 Two six one one two nine zero. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. You did a great well, job. Well, thank you. <laughs>